Hey everyone, today is June 30th, 2021, and we will begin, uh, sorry, we will continue on in 2 Kings 23 and 24. We will begin Romans 1, 1 through 17, Psalm 149, and Proverbs 18, 13. So let's finish out the month of June. 2 Kings 23 and 24. Then the king sent... And all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem were gathered to him. And the king went up to the house of the Lord, and with him all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the priests and the prophets, all the people, both small and great. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant that had been found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. And all the people joined in the covenant. And the king commanded Hilkiah the high priest and the priests of the second order and the keepers of the threshold to bring out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels made for Baal, for Asherah, and for all the hosts of heaven. He burned them outside Jerusalem in the fields of the Kidron and carried their ashes to Bethel. And he, and he deposed of the priests whom the kings of Judah had, had ordained to make offerings in the high places at the cities of Judah and around Jerusalem, those, who also, those also who burned incense to Baal, to the sun and the moon and the constellations and all the hosts of the heavens. And he brought out the Asherah from the house of the Lord outside Jerusalem to the brook Kidron, and he burned it at the brook Kidron and beat it to dust and cast the dust off upon, and cast the dust of it upon the graves of the common people. And he broke down the houses of the male cult prostitutes who were in the house of the Lord, where the women wove hangings for the Asherah. And he brought all the priests out of the cities of Judah and defiled the high places where the priests had made offerings, from Geba to, Be to Beersheba. And he broke down the high places of the gates that were at the entrance of the gate of Joshua, the governor of the city, which were on the lefts, which were on one's left at the gate of the city. However, the priests of the high places did not come up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but they ate unleavened bread among their brothers. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, Hinnom, that no one might burn his son or daughter as an offering to Moloch. And he removed the horses that the kings of Judah had dedicated to the sun at the entrance of the house of the Lord by the chamber of Nathan Melech, the chamberlain, the chamberlain, which was in the precincts. And he burned the chariots of the sun with fire, and he and the altars on the roof of the upper chamber of Ahaz, which the kings of Judah had made, and the altars that Manasseh had made in the two courts of the house of the Lord, he pulled down and broke in pieces, and cast the dust of them into the brook Kidron. And the king defiled the high places that were east of Jerusalem, to the south of the, mo of the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon, the king of Israel, had built for Ashtoreth, the abomination of the Sidonians, and for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and for Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And he, broke into and he broke in pieces the pillars and cut down the Asherim and filled their places with the bones of men. Moreover, the altar at Bethel, the high place erected by Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. That altar with the high place he pulled down and burned, reducing it to dust. He also burned the Asherah. And as Josiah turned, he saw the tombs there on the mount. And he sent and took the bones out of the tombs and burned them on the altar and defiled, and defiled it, according to the word of the Lord, that the man of God proclaimed who, he, who had predicted these things. Then he said, what is that monument that I see? And the men of the city told him, It is the tomb of the man of God who came from Judah and, pre and predicated, sorry, and predicted these things that you have done against the altar at Bethel. And he said, Let him be, let no man move his bones. So they let his bones alone with the bones of the prophet who came out of Samaria. And Josiah removed all the shrines of the high places that were in the cities of Samaria, which kings of Israel had made, provoking the Lord to anger. 
He did to them according to all that he had done at Bethel. And he sacrificed all the priests of the high places who were there on the altars and burned human bones on them. Then he returned to Jerusalem. And the king commanded all the people, Keep the Passover to the Lord your God, as it is written in the book of the covenant. For such Passover had been kept since the days of the judges who judged Israel, or during all the days of the kings of Israel, or of the kings of Judah. But in the eighteenth year of King Josiah, this Passover was kept in the Lord, to the Lord in Jerusalem. Moreover, Josiah put away the, med the mediums and the necromancers and the household gods and the idols and all the abominations that were seen in the land of Judah and, Jerusalem, and in Jerusalem, that he might establish the words of the law that were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. Before him there was no king like him, who turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to all the law that, of Moses, nor did any like him arise after him. Still the Lord did not turn from the burning of his great wrath, by which his anger was kindled against Judah, because of all the provo provocations with which Manasseh had provoked him. And the Lord said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight, as I have removed Israel, and I will cast off this city that I have chosen, Jerusalem, and the house of which I said, My name shall be there. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? In his days, Pharaoh, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, went up to the king of Assyria, to the river Euphrates. King Josiah went to meet him, and Pharaoh Necho killed him at Megiddo as soon as he saw him. And his servants carried him dead in a chariot from Megiddo and brought him to Jerusalem and buried him in his own tomb. And the people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and anointed him and made him king in his father's place. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he, when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Israel. His mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his fathers had done. And Pharaoh Necho put him in bonds at Ribah, Riblah, in the land of Hamath, that he might not reign in Jerusalem and laid on the land a tribute of a hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And Pharaoh Necho made Eliakim, the son of Josiah, king in the place of Josiah his father, and changed his name to Jehoiakim. But he took Jehoahaz away, and he came to Egypt and died there. And Jehoiakim gave the silver and the gold to Pharaoh, but he taxed the land and gave to give the money according to the command of Pharaoh. He exacted the silver and the gold of the people of the land from everyone according to his assessment to give to give it to Pharaoh Necho. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zebida, the daughter of Padiah of Rumah. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord according to all that his fathers had done. In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim came, became his servant for three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him, and the Lord sent against him bands of the Chaldeans, and bands of, of the Syrians, and bands of the Moabites, and bands of the Ammonites, and sent them against Judah to destroy it, according to the word that the Lord had spoken by his servants, the prophets. Surely this came upon Judah at the command of the Lord, to remove them out of his sight, for the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he had done, and also for the innocent blood that he had shed. For he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, and the Lord would not part, and the Lord would not pardon. Now the rest of the deeds of Jehoiakim and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Jehoiakim slept with his fathers, and Jehoiachin, his son, reigned in his place. And the king of Egypt did not come out against his his did not come again out of his land. For the king of Babylon had taken all that belonged to the king of Egypt from the brook of Egypt to the river Euphrates. Sorry, I'm just going to move this a minute. Okay. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he became king and he reigned three months in, in Jerusalem. His mother's name was 
Nehushta, the daughter of Elnathan of Jerusalem. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father had done. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up to Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. And Nebuchadnezzar, king, king of Babylon, came to the city while his servants were besieging it. And Jehoiachin, the king of Judah, gave himself up to the king of Babylon, himself and his mother and his servants and his officials and his palace officials. The king of Babylon took him prisoner in the eighth year of his reign and carried off all the treasures of the house of the Lord and the, tra and the treasures of the king's house and cut in pieces all the vessels of gold in the temple of the Lord, which Solomon, king of Israel, had made, as the Lord had foretold. He carried away all Jerusalem and all the officials and all the mighty men of valor, 10,000 captives, and all the craftsmen and the smiths. None remained except the poorest people of the land. He carried away Jehoiachin to Babylon. The king's mother, the king's wives, his officials, and the chief men of the land he took into captivity from, ba from Jerusalem to Babylon. And the king of Babylon brought captive to Babylon all the men of valor, 7,000, and the craftsmen and the metal workers, 1,000, all of them strong and fit for war. And the king of Babylon made Mataniah, Jehoiachin's uncle, king in his place, and changed his name to Zedekiah. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For because of the anger of the Lord, it came to the point in Jerusalem and Judah that he cast them out from his presence. And Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. Romans 1, 1-17 Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be the Son of God in power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all nations, in including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because, of, because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I mention you always in my prayers, asking that somehow by God's will I may now at last succeed in coming to you. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you, that is, that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. I do not want to, you to be unaware, brothers, that I have often intended to come to you, but thus far I have been prevent, but thus far have been prevented, in order that I might reap some harvest among you as, as among the rest of the Gentiles, among you as well as among the rest of the Gentiles. I am under obligation by both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. So I am eager to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for the salvation to everyone who believes, to, th to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in the righteousness of God is revealed from faith, for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Psalm 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the godly. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the, the humble with salvation. Let the let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute them with the judgment written, to execute on them 
the judgment written. <coughs> this is honor for all his godly ones. Excuse me. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 18, 13. If one gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly and shame. Hmm. Well, that is six months of reading, and it um, feels good to be working our way through. Um, approximately halfway through the Bible at this point, and uh, it is wonderful. Tomorrow is July 1st. We'll read 2 Kings chapter 25. Romans 1, 18 through 32, Psalm 150, and Proverbs 18, 14, and 15. So I'll see you back here again tomorrow. Have a great day.